Hi, I'm Natalie Emmanuel, and I am going to talk you through my hair, skincare, and makeup routine. First rule of setting your curls is making sure that they are fully wet because that's the best version of your curls. So I'm gonna wet my hair. I'm just very carefully just taking out a few little tangles. Very important thing for curly, kinky, coily hair. Oiling my scalp with this lovely castor oil. So I do a little bit at a time, maybe this much. And I just kind of massage it into my scalp. And I sort of make sure I get all over my scalp. The next thing I do now is put in my leave-in conditioner. I'm using a uh, Jim and Henry 10 Pro, Corsican Rosemary and Chamomile. And Rosemary is really, really great um, for hair growth as well. So I didn't realize quite how challenging it would be having a very curly, kinky hair um, in the kind of acting industry. Like the idea that my hair would be natural was kind of like not really seen much and I remember having people come up to me and be like oh it's so great that you wear your natural hair it sort of dawned on me I was like right I haven't you're right I never see people with their natural hair really and um, and it was actually became quite important to me that I always try to just demonstrate that <laughs> my hair in its natural form is just beautiful and fine I don't have to change it I am using pattern Shout out Tracy Ellis Ross, what a queen. So I, I'm starting with like this amount. Just in this, you know, routine, I'm using two different lines for kinky and coily hair. And the fact as well that these are black owned businesses, what's happened is, is that black women are going I don't, I, I grew up not having things in my hair and now I, I'm going to make one. I'm here to support all of those people. This is what I use to dry my hair with um, a diffuser. Sometimes just to kind of finish off the drying, I just take the diffuser off. The next stage is just kind of going through it with a little pick. Oh yeah, I like that. Okay, so a little styling thing. I'm gonna lay my edges. I actually just really like, it's again, patterns, edge control. It's really good. Put it over. Most of the time I'm trying to get out of the house as quickly as possible. And um, so I'll just do the side that people can see. It's like the equivalent for me of like shaving your legs up into the skirt, you know, like, so no one, or just shaving your ankles on your like three, le three quarter length trousers. edges laid, juicy, juicy curls. And so on to skincare. I have very volatile skin. I'm actually healing, as you may have already noticed from a little breakout, um, my polka dots, as I like to call them. Foam cleanser for darker skin tones. So I read somewhere that you should cleanse your skin for at least like 60 seconds. And now I'm gonna rinse off. I have a second cleanser, the enzyme cleanser. I never really went through like crazy acne during puberty. So yeah, when I got to like my mid twenties, I just started like getting this like hormonal breakouts. And um, it was often in these areas, which is like usually linked to hormones. I was quite insecure about it. But yeah, like with the exfoliating, I think exfoliation is just really important to sort of rejuvenate the skin. So gently pat my face dry, but I quite like leaving it a little bit damp for when I apply um, my serums. I'm still recovering from this breakout, so I'm using um, the clarifying serum. So I use just one pipette full. Okay. 
give it a minute just to soak in before I moisturize. I get kind of just like a small amount. And just scoop my face. I um, bought myself a light mask. And so, you know, it's quite fetching. And I found that this has really helped with um, the inflammation that I get, and it kind of helps reduce it much faster. Probably the most important thing is your SPF, the little sun drops. I have not always worn sunblock. I haven't always done it in terms of my skincare, but definitely if I was like on holiday or where it's very hot. And the final thing for skincare is um, spot treatment. So just to deal with my little friends that I have. I've been vegan now for maybe, I think it's been eight years. There was something about just being really um, particular about what I ate and what I put in my body. That kind of journey came from my kind of love of yoga and love of self-care and meditation and just being really in tune with my body and really understanding my body. So moving on to the makeup look, I sort of start with my lip balm, which is from a lovely kind of indie company called Cosmetics a la carte in London. Growing up, like finding foundations that actually matched your skin was really, really hard. My skin tone is kind of much more complicated as everybody's is. So I went and had my foundation blended and I kind of haven't really looked back. And I'll just start with a few pumps. Early on in my career where I was having issues with people being able to do my do my makeup, I just realized it was incredibly important that I could do my own. And often after I'd been through makeup, um, just go and blend my foundation a bit more. But we are working hard to make that a thing of the past. Chanel concealer. I just put a little bit on the back of my hand because I don't want to touch the kind of um, tip of it onto my acne. So I like to just kind of do a bit with my finger. And then I'll do a little bit under my eyes depending on how rested I am. <laughs> yeah, and I have a bit of like sort of scarring that can show through. So sometimes I just evenly just spread it around. So next, this is from Ulta and it is Stay Cheeky Liquid Blush. I just start in the apple of my cheek. And this is nice because it's got a little like kind of glow to it as well, like almost a bit of a highlight. My character on Game of Thrones looked like she had no makeup on, but she I definitely had like very natural looking makeup. It wasn't beauty makeup. When I learned that Masande was gonna die as the only woman of colour on the show, I knew that people would feel her loss, like the loss of her, because she's also just like a really kind, good character. I was, n I was not anticipating, I guess, the sort of, the size of the reaction that happened. And so I think that really sparked a conversation about when we make these shows in the future, when we are casting these shows, like, do we just have to have the one person? Is there space for more of us? And I think the answer is yes. And I know the answer is yes. And that's especially true, like just with what we've been talking about with hair and makeup and making sure that our makeup rooms, our hair departments, you know, they're, they're catering to people who don't just fit this one box that we've seen just become the standard. I always wished that there was someone who was in that room who would be advocating for me too and not having to always advocate for myself. I really like kind of dewy, glossy skin. And so this little product from Glossier, I just do like maybe one pump. I just kind of get it on my high points, on my cheeks. 
and I like to just put a little bit in the center just over my eyelid. Someone did this to me on a shoot once and I was like, oh, this is so cute. And I have like natural pigmentation on my eyelids that are quite brown and I quite like it. I think it kind of gives me definition without trying. So thanks mum for that. This cool little brand called Lorac. I use their liquid, their pro liquid eyeliner in black. We're feeling fancy today. So I'm gonna put a complete line. Oh, I did that quite easily. That never happens. So mascara. I like to sort of brush them towards the out, outer edge of the eye. So my eyebrows and I, we have been through a lot together. I was bullied quite badly about them and people used to tease me about how I only had like bushy eyebrows that joined in the middle. And I begged my mum for years. She wouldn't let me pluck them. She wouldn't let me do anything to them. When I was about 15, I finally convinced her to let me get them waxed. And when I tell you this woman destroyed my eyebrows, they literally, I mean, I'm just gonna comb them. They literally started here. And this was all gone in the middle. In the end, I just decided that no one else was gonna do my brows but me. I know how I like them. And I like them fuller. I like to kind of brush them up and sort of fan them out. We're gonna fill them in slightly. And basically when anyone compliments my eyebrows, I'm like, I guess we're best friends forever. I use the Glossier Boy Brow. And I, what I do, because I've just put the product in, I don't wanna uh, move it around too much. I kind of just like almost back, like comb my hair on the edges, just in the wrong direction. Brush them into a nice shape. And there they are. So this is my final look. Uh, I hope you enjoyed learning about how I do my hair and my makeup and skincare. Bye.